this is going to be your highest entry model that you could possibly have. So let's begin. Essentially, this is the type of trading model that I always use because it provides you with the highest probability setups in it playing out. But if you look at it from an overall standpoint, this overall trading model, not just the entry model, will also be the most highest probability, but also the most simple. So the highest probability trading model you could have is when every single time frame is aligned with each other. That is when your trading conditions are the most optimal. But the thing is, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have certain time frame misaligned with each other. So for example, in this scenario over here, the daily is clearly bearish. We're in a market maker sell model, and ideally price should just retrace from here into probably an inefficiency before continuations lower and take out this original consolidation, right? Because the daily, if you look at this specific price link, it's given you another break. There are no signs of a market reversal yet on the daily time frame. In order to justify a market reversal here that we're going to continue higher and go bullish, you would want to see a market structure break to the upside, being this swing high. Remember your three candles. So until price gives us that body closure past that swing high, on the daily, we are still bearish. But look at what you have here. You have this imbalance over here on the buy side curve of this market maker sell model where price has come back into and that is currently giving you a bullish reaction. So if I replay to this, and then I drop down onto my middle time frame. As you can see, when playing price out, you get the exact same market reversal. Yeah. This is your swing high. This is your swing high because that swing high took out a swing low to continue lower, implement a long term low before taking out this high, which becomes your market structure break. So now, the daily, we're still bearish. However, the four hour, we have had our market reversal to go from bearish here to bullish. So because we've gone bullish from here, what could your draws on liquidity be? Your draws on liquidity could be this high, all the way down to this high, and this high. So overall, those three swing highs simply forms your low resistance trend line liquidity. That could be your next immediate draw liquidity. If price displaces heavily through this consolidation and through the trend line liquidity with a full body closure on your daily time frame past this high, then you would anticipate for this high to be your next target. The reason why I say this with this trend line liquidity is because if you go back onto the daily, where that trend line liquidity was, is where you have your swing high on your daily time frame and this was your invalidation level to look for shorts on your daily time frame right so once price has a full body closure past the swing high in line with your trend and liquidity on your four hour this simply becomes your market reversal on your daily time frame to go bullish because that's the case you can anticipate for this draw to go which is also in line with this imbalance over here so going back to the point when every single time frame is aligned, that is where you have your highest probability trade and your most optimal trading conditions. But this doesn't necessarily mean you always have to have it aligned. Sometimes your highest time frame, in this example being a daily, it could be misaligned with your four hour and your lower time frame. Because here on a four hour, when you have that bullish market structure break, you can look for immediate longs on your lower time frame. Now, how would that look like? This is where you could look for discount rates to play off of. In this scenario, we have this bullish order block over here, or this imbalance over here. Price can only do one of two things, rebalance old inefficiencies, or seek new liquidity. Sometimes, it could continue deeper into this bullish order block, instead of rebalancing the initial inefficiency over here. Because you have to remember, at every single array, there is some sort of liquidity. It's just that the fact that here, when you have imbalances, that is where you have the most significant inefficiency. Buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. But this doesn't necessarily mean that these discount rates have no liquidity because they do have liquidity inside of them. So a lot of the times, price has to continue even deeper and instead of rebalancing your initial inefficiency, it rebalances a deeper discount rate to accumulate enough long positions to distribute to higher. And most of the time, you are not going to be 100% sure which array is going to be mitigated before it continues higher. And that is going to be the main teaching for this video. Because even though most of the time you're not going to be 100% sure, there are two ways that you could use to increase that probability of your anticipation for which key level is going to be hit for price to continue higher in this specific example, right? The first one and the most obvious one is how many PD arrays it is currently overlapping with. This overall bullish order block overlaps with this breaker block. So from here to here, that is a key level. 
This will create more significance at this key level, right? It becomes much more higher probability for prices to come back into before continuing higher. Not only that, but it increases the likelihood of this key level staying respected. The reason being is because if price was to continue higher, you don't necessarily want to see it disrespect multiple discount arrays, especially when the discount arrays overlap. So essentially, when you have overlapping PD arrays, depending on what direction your current price action is going in, you do not want to see the supporting discount arrays become disrespected. Vice versa, if it was bearish, you do not want to see premium arrays become disrespected. So that's your first overlapping PD array. However, here, you also have the same thing. This overlaps with this imbalance over here. So in terms of significance, this key level over here is on the same level of significance as this key level over here because they both have overlapping PD arrays. But the likelihood of this one getting hit and continuing higher is much more higher probability than this one, of course, because over here, this is your most immediate inefficiency. And the fact that it overlaps with another discount array means that there is an abundance of liquidity over here where price could accumulate enough positions at before continuing higher, right? That is your first way of anticipating which key level is likely going to hold for a high probability trading setup. Now, because that's the case, what would you simply do to confirm everything? Drop down onto your lower time frame, playing price out, right? You go into the next day, next day London session, will be 1 a.m. New York time. And this is where you would look for that reversal to go bullish. The reason why you're looking for that reversal to go bullish is because remember, this is the key higher time frame level on your four hour. It's overlapping with another PD array as well. So the area where you have the darker color, that is ideally where you want to hunt for your reversal in your kill zone sessions. Because if you look at the previous session, this was just a consolidation. The initial move higher to take out this market structure break was to just engineer liquidity on both sides of the markets. For London kill zone to take out and possibly manipulate and continue higher. Right, look how aggressive this move is in comparison to this overall consolidation over here. So when price comes back into this key level, look at what you get there. This is where the London session has ended. But because you've had that initial reversal in London, this means going into New York, this is where you could start a lot of continuations to take out Asia sessions high. Yeah, with this buy side liquidity. If you zoom in closer, again, it's literally the same thing. You have a swing high over here. Swing high because it took out a swing low. Here, the initial tap into this swing high doesn't have a full body closure past that swing high. So from here to here, this is where I would still be wary of a market reversal. Until we had this large displacement higher with a full body closure past this swing high, that would validify my market structure break. So here, that is my market structure break after you had a full body closure past this high. Now, because London session has ended, I wouldn't necessarily be looking for trade during the lunch period between London and New York. But here, you can start to outline what key levels you can enter off of. After you had this market reversal, what do you have here? You have this bullish order block, which also aligns with these bearish order blocks. And if you look closely, there is also an imbalance over here. Right. You can see that this general area, there is an abundance in discount rates. Ask yourself this. If price was to continue higher, do you want to see price take out this general key level? You wouldn't want to see that, right? If price was to continue higher, in line with your four hour bullish direction and in line with your 15 minute bullish reversal off of your four hour discount rate. You wouldn't want to see this general area go, right? So, playing price up, going into New York, 8 a.m. New York time, this is where you could possibly have a trade. Entry off of there, stop loss below this low, and what would you look to target? This immediate buy side liquidity for a nice free R trade, which is also your Asia sessions high. If you look closely, this is just a market maker buy model. This is where you had your smart money reversal. So this is basically the majority of my entries, right? All I'm looking for is a market structure break, fairly simple, right? Market structure break, full body closure past that swing high that caused the market structure break, and then I'm looking for overlapping PD arrays. Because in scenarios where you have a number of PD arrays that are left behind. Let's say you don't get your swing high until this swing high gets broken through, right? When, once this swing high gets broken through, you are left with this large range of discount arrays to base your entry off of. So this is where it could start to cause a lot of confusion because you are unsure of which discount array price is going to retrace back into before continuing higher. 
simply due to the vast number of discount arrays that are left behind. Right, so what helps that case is looking for your PD arrays that overlaps. In those type of scenarios where price leaves behind a large number of discount arrays, your highest probability entries will always be at a place where that key level has the most discount arrays overlapping with each other. Because not only does it provide you with a more likelihood of price retracing back to mitigate that key level, because at those key levels, when there are overlapping PD arrays, there is an abundance in liquidity. So not only will it provide you with a higher likelihood of price coming into that for your entry, but it also provides you with a key level you would anticipate to stay protected for the reasons that I previously mentioned. In a bullish scenario, you don't want to see discount arrays become disrespected, especially the ones that overlap. Right, so that is why the majority of trades I take, it is always based off of overlapping PD arrays after you had this market structure break. So, notice how it continues higher, giving you more breaks to the upside after taking out swing highs, but look at that deep retracement it gives you. That deep retracement that I gave you, the bodies still respected this overlapping key level for discount arrays. From here to here. The body still respected that and it doesn't violate past these lows. And as you can see here, by London close, it hits your take profit for a free R trade. Right, so that's an extremely simple trading model and an entry model that you could use, right? All you have to do is wait for your higher time frame, middle time frame, and lower time frame to align with each other for your highest probability setups. But this doesn't necessarily mean you have to wait for your higher time frame to align with your middle and lower time frame. If your middle and lower time frame are aligned with each other and your higher time frame isn't, you can still take immediate trades. They would just be considered your short-term trades. But once you have that market reversal on your middle time frame, you are looking for an overlapping PD array for price to come back into. In this case, it came back to the most immediate one. And then you are dropping to your lower time frame and you are essentially looking for the same thing. You're looking for that market reversal to go higher to confirm that your lower time frame is aligned with your middle time frame. And you're looking for PD arrays that overlap with each other for your entries. And that is pretty much my trading plan. It's extremely basic, but because it's so basic and simple, it is extremely easy to follow and become profitable with it. The only thing that differentiates the ones that are not profitable and the ones that are profitable with this trading model is the fact that you fail to stay patient. You fail to wait for that realignment of timeframes and the retracements of price action into overlapping PD arrays for your entries. Those are the two factors that differentiate the ones that are profitable and the ones that are unprofitable with this model. It's likely that you're not going to get a setup with this trading model every day, but every single setup you do get will be a high probability setup, considering the fact that you follow these criteria. Because even if you follow these criteria and price leads without you, because that would just ruin the probability of this trading model providing you that edge over the markets. This is an extremely easy training model and entry model that you could use. Don't underestimate it just because it's easy. You don't have to overcomplicate trading to become consistently profitable. So that is a short video covering this training model. In the future, we will be going over this model in much more detail, but this is an overview of this basic model that you can already implement into your plan. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.